the demographic, the main demographic age group, so to say. You uh, here's the thing. You'd think that it was. Um, you'd think that it would be like just kids that are like. I don't know, like 14 to 18, but it's actually like a lot of other people in like their mid 20s and yeah. like even 30s. One of my very, yeah. one of my best friends recognized you. He really? Saw, like, I posted something with you one time. He's like, you know that guy? And I was like, yeah. Oh, you reposted something of mine, I think. And he's like, how did you? I was like, I was like, oh, it's just my buddy Lucas. He's nice. like, you know that fucking kid? I was like, yeah, I do comedy with him. You know? Oh, that's so cool. But he recognized your videos. I remember last summer, uh, Claire Alexander, it was at um, Lee and Maxim's old place on the rooftop there, yeah. Mike. And uh, afterwards, Claire was like, oh, my cousin is a big fan of yours. Can yeah. we take a selfie to send to him? I was like, absolutely. And then he never responded. I was like, you got to disown this fucker. <laughs> Somebody yesterday messaged me. It was a kid mm -hmm. who used to come to the Anne Hathaway Zoom mic and was saying that you were like his inspiration on TikTok. Aww. Yeah. That's awesome. Aw, like, damn. Get new inspo. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That, that too. I was like, this fucking kid? That guy? Yeah. This one? Yeah. 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 Lucas Howell, dude. <laughs> are we recording? We are. Yay, yeah, yay. Yeah. Are we recording up your big butt? Hell yeah. We're doing <laughs> we're doing a colonoscopy today. Ooh. Our guest just got a colonoscopy. <laughs> no, I didn't. Hell Give yeah, you for, did. You don't have to hide it. For okay. leisure. You I'll don't have to hide it. that you got a camera up your butt oh. for pleasure. Hey, we don't kink shame on this podcast. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, all right, all right. We don't, we don't do that. Fine, fine. I, did I know it. you're okay. an exhibitionist yeah. about your <laughs> prostate. Oh, absolutely. So, yeah. Absolutely. So how was it? Did it... Uh, did you require anesthesia, or did no. you want to feel every inch? First of all, okay, for the record here, I did not get a colonoscopy, but I did have... I didn't. I had my first physical in uh, about three years. Whoa. Wow. So how how are you? I'm are you, good. You I'm, in good health? I'm in very good health. Yeah, I got a I got a EKG, ECG. Oh, yeah, EKG, I know about yeah, EKG. Yeah, ec yeah. Echocardiogram? Yeah. 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 So it's all well, that's them. a C, actually. So why do they call it EKG? Are they trying to be cool, like Kardashian? Or like Cars for Kids? <laughs> <laughs> Yo, those ads are creepy. They, oh yeah. <laughs> did you know that? Do you know that they're like, it's all by like Jews trying to like help it's, young Jewish kids. Everything is by kids. Jews. Is it really? Everything yeah, it's, is by Jews. It's it's, it's a it's like um it's a Jewish run organization to help like low income Jewish youth. That's their only focus. That's why they raise the money. That's why they do these. They ads. should say that anywhere in the ad. Yeah. It just looks like the kids got kidnapped. Yeah, <laughs> I know the song's pretty creepy, dude. <laughs> it One eight seven seven cars for kids. But it's so catchy at the same it time. It is. It is. It totally is. Donate yeah. your cars for today. today. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It is a good one. And then the what, guy what? comes on. Is someone on the fence about donating their car, and then they see the ad? You know what? Like. This convinced me. Maybe like, somebody in tax trouble because they emphasize <laughs> that it's tax deductible Whoa. a little Love bit too much. Love that you go much. there. It, well, it's thing on the brain. Tax deductible. That's what they. That's what they go for. Never thought of that. Yeah. This is the kind of angle we need on yeah. this podcast. I think, this I is... think that's the big thing. I think it's the tax deduction. Yeah. That is genius. Yeah. Because this let's... is our guest today, tax expert <laughs> Ryan O'Toole. Hell yeah! Give it up for him, <laughs> Ryan O'Toole. Certified, licensed CPA. That's right, everybody. Oh, yeah. That's right, I am. How are you evading your taxes today? <laughs> <laughs> I, don't, I don't know. I think I'm pretty good with my taxes in general. Right. I don't think I've done anything. Uh, I don't. I don't really have a lot of money, so it's it's not. Uh... <laughs> Well, though I am, I guess they're taxing Venmo and uh, Cash App and all that stuff mm. this year, so I'm a little. Uh... That is, when did that start with the Venmo thing? Because like it, because for those who don't know, it like open mics, you typically pay like anywhere from like two to five dollars, yeah. at least in New York right now, to and like used venmo for ages but suddenly when did you did you get a notification from venmo your bank what happened i got a weird thing on venmo where it, it asked me like to confirm my identity and at first i thought it was fake i thought something popped up on my phone so i didn't do it you know mm -hmm. and then i started reading articles about it and other people told me and then i was like i'm gonna get one of those uh i don't know if it's a 1099 form one of those tax forms about my cash income but the problem is is i also use venmo almost daily you know what i yeah. mean like if i'm going out to eat with somebody chances are both of us don't have cash you yeah. know what i yeah. mean 
So I don't know, but yeah. So and that's, how else are you gonna pay to get your toes sucked? That's ex- exactly. Yeah, that's what and I'm then you saying. Write it I memo. mean, you could just ask me nicely. <laughs> <laughs> Lucas will do it for me. He'll I'll pay, pay you. I'll pay you. I, I, yeah. yeah. Okay. Well, now I know. You that's know how we mean? met. Exactly. Everyone's asking, "How did you meet this famous TikTok guy?" Absolutely. I'm like, He's not the sweet, innocent little girl you think he is. No, I'm just on Craigslist every day trying to get my thrills. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Craig doesn't want to suck your toes. Despite my best efforts? <laughs> you think Craigslist was started by a guy named Craig? Has to be. Has to be? No, uh, contrary to popular belief, it was actually started by Angie, and Craig started Angie's List. What was Angie's? Oh, was that the prostitution list? What? No. Oh, no, oh, no. I thought Angie's List was like, hey, find a maid or a babysitter or something like that. That's what I thought Angie's List was. I'm thinking of Ashley Madison. Ashley <laughs> Madison. Yeah, 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 yeah. Those people having affairs, wasn't it? Yo, yeah, yes. Yeah, yeah. The aff- and then they leaked all the information. Yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, and so everyone man. knew who was cheating. Yeah. That was the ultimate kink shame right there because yeah. wasn't the idea of that? It was people that had like a fetish towards cheating to being in affairs, right? Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was the ultimate one right there. Yeah. You gotta love the people just saw on the internet. This is private and confidential. And they went, yeah. probably. Yeah. Well, sure. I know. I know. <laughs> well, the thing is, I don't mean to like out myself right now, but oh, I. But, here um, we go. But I, I sometimes watch porn. And Ooh. when I do, I, 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 I hope I'm not a. Uh, ruining anyone's image of me right now but um but like when i do when i see like those pop-up ads for ashley madison i never once think oh i should go on i'm wondering like does anyone actually go for those well yeah they did with ashley Apparently. madison they did i was gonna oh I, I thought you were gonna say well i do no oh, no no i uh I, are there no. ever a pop-up ad you're like i want to click that yeah. No. Nah. Have you found a hot single in your no. area? <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't think so. To be honest, I don't. You don't think? Yeah, <laughs> I'm trying to think. You're I'm... using lawyer language. Allegedly, I, no, I can't yeah, recall. Yeah. No, no, I don't, I don't. I don't watch adult videos. You know what mm. I mean? I'm a good guy. No, no I you're don't. A good Christian boy. I yeah. don't think so. I don't. I don't think I have. Yeah, I don't That's watch good. porn, but I do use Ashley Madison. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> yeah. I have heard that only 20 percent of women watch porn because women. Are more imaginative, and I prefer hmm. I prefer a narrative. I Wh- need when a... you when you when you say narrative, who's the writer? Um, J.K. Rowling. <laughs> Ever heard of her? That's right. I'm reading the Goblet of Fire right now. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> oh yeah. What do you th- What do you think of it? It's getting red-pilled like... against trans people as we speak. <laughs> <laughs> I'm only like a hundred. That's exactly why I started reading Harry Potter. <laughs> yeah. No, it's not, dude. It's not. He was like, I'm sick of this shit. I know. God, I the need time- someone who represents my yeah. views. <laughs> I'm, I, I love Harry Potter. I read the first three books. Like, sh- I ripped through the first three books in like uh, maybe a month. And then I took a break. And then I just picked up the fourth one a couple days ago. So yeah. it's so good. Wait, what chapter are you on right now? Um, I'm just. Uh, I have to be I'm like 80 90 pages in uh okay. they're they're camping out for the Quidditch World Cup right oh, now. yeah that's, yeah, yeah that's a good that's bit. where I am Quidditch honestly sounds sick although I will say at my college there was a Quidditch team and those people were I'm so sorry if any of the Quidditch people were listening but the like they would have been furries if it wasn't yeah. Quidditch because <laughs> yeah. they no. can't fly if no you, I feel they're like... literally just running around <laughs> with like a broomstick and like oh I'm s- it's almost real yeah like... yeah sometimes the imagination is enough you know yeah it is but it's like dude Harry Potter fell 50 fucking feet in the World Cup final at the end of uh the third Harry that was a massive part of it he fell 50 feet that could yeah. never happen in our world. We yeah. need more brain trauma to make Quidditch yeah. real. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we need more CTE. They, yeah, they need to take a note from the NFL. You know? Oh, my God. What if there's, like, <laughs> could you imagine, like, a documentary? <laughs> A documentary like about like about like head trauma, but it's in the Harry Potter yeah. universe. So, like, quit. <laughs> like we need we need we need like safer guidelines Absolutely, for Quidditch. Dude. That'd be awesome. <laughs> All these Quidditch players are beating their wives. <laughs> oh because- my God. So Will Smith stars in a movie about that, yeah. but it's about the Harry Potter universe. <laughs> Dumbledore's like has like a hundred lawyers around him just saying. <laughs> He's like, you know, the air you get from the broom, it actually gives you brain damage. Yeah. You know, Malfoy was an amazing seeker, and now he can't even brush his teeth. Yeah, all the, all the pure-blooded families are investors that are trying to protect the institution. Yo, that's why and they... they put- and they only have low-income players from Brazil. <laughs> 
all these people, I mean, they immigrate to play Quidditch yeah, and then yeah, they get yeah. fucked yeah. over absolutely no infrastructure, awesome. yeah. no backup plan. Oh my God, this is such a good sketch. This is such a good Be idea. Great, dude. It's, I think a sketch is always great when half of it is just explaining the logistics of the world. Yeah, <laughs> totally. yeah. This is the new. This in the, is, into Harry Potter world, you know? Oh my God. Yeah, but they were, those Quidditch kids, were, they like really thought they were really cool, I think, but... Oh yeah, it it's hard. It's it sounds good on paper. The idea of just like getting together with like your enthusiast friends and doing somewhat something like semi athletic, but like when you see it, it, there's someone who like plays the snitch. There's someone who just like runs around oh, the yeah, field dressed in gold that. as the snitch. I find that the funniest. <laughs> yeah, I think I think that it's something maybe my school made up to lure people in, like mm. lure in applicants. But I remember hearing about, I remember watching something about that where like Quidditch was at a bunch of schools. Like, yeah. When mm. I remember seeing that. Did you bet the, on it? No. Were you in a betting ring? <laughs> Running Imagine. numbers on college Quidditch. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Over under. Yeah, that's yeah. right. But I, I, I don't know. Where'd you go to school? I went to a program that was through a bunch of the CUNYs. It was called Macaulay Honors College. It was at Hunter College. I remember being like told, I was like, oh, this so-and-so got Macaulay Honors in my high school. Yeah, yeah. It was a big thing. It was a big thing. But oh, I never yeah. talk about it because it's a big thing to approximately two people. Did we just get airdrop? Did something? you just get airdrop? Some, I think I got text messages. Oh. Is that the airdrop sound? That sound, that's the definitely the airdrop sound. You want to hear the exact boop, boop, boop. text I just got? What'd yes. you get? My cousin Jack just texted me. Massive L. I got COVID. <laughs> <laughs> Shout out my cousin Jack. <laughs> Massive L. Yeah, he's oh a college kid. You know, that's how they talk, dude. Oh. You know, we'll, <laughs> s- we'll send him this to chair him. He'll be fine. Where is know. Jack? We'll- uh, Boston University. Boston University. Yeah. He went to the uh, physician's office. They were like, you've COVID. He was like, oh, no cap. Yeah, <laughs> I know. For real. Smoked Bet. his jewel. Bet. Are you serious right now? Oh, they're all smoking their jewels. College kids, I feel like, I remember when everyone, remember a few years ago we went through the, I feel like it was our age group where it seemed like every college kid was whiny and crying and complaining. I feel like college kids are kind of maybe becoming cool again. Maybe. I'm not sure mm. on What it. makes you say what, that? What's the change you're noticing? I, okay, I want to start with the younger group first. Like my other cousin, she's mm-hmm. in either like i think she's in like seventh grade Mm -hmm. i just seem i feel like she's just mad cool okay like i just feel like all her friends are cool dude she just reminds me like i don't even know if she skateboards but she just reminds me like a cool skateboarding kid who's just mad chill and i think a lot of maybe i'm just noticing like today when i got off the train station here like six kids who looked similar to her except new york city versions all snuck onto the train at the same time. And it's like, I know that your school's giving you Metro cards. You know oh, what I mean? But you're still shit. choosing to do things like this. Maybe I'm wrong. You know what I mean? Maybe I just hate my generation. My, not even my generation, my age. <laughs> was born in the wrong generation. No, yeah. I'm Man. happy to be born when I was. But a lot of people, you know. Just, That's yeah. interesting. I, I don't have any... I don't have any cousins or relatives that are in college right now. I don't have really like a window into it. I just feel bad for them. Uh, dealing with like COVID and having not yeah to that sucks yeah. maybe that's why they're cool oh might be because they like just I the would... intense solitary confinement made them all <laughs> super rad wait till I get out <laughs> <laughs> we're gonna be fucking yeah <laughs> seriously yeah I mean it would have been I feel like when I was they do like prison talks but yeah. from home <gasps> oh my god <laughs> cartel talk Did cartel we talk about that last oh, week yeah, cartel yeah, yeah. talk are you aware of are you aware of like cartel talk and prison talk no there's like a whole subgenre of TikToks about like people in cartels and people in prison not at the same time. No. From what I imagine. They use in TikTok. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. They have phones and shit in prison and they're like doing like prison hacks. Like showing you here's how you cook sausage with just a toilet roll and a toilet. Apparently toilet really? is very versatile. Swiss uh, Army knife. Are they uh oh that's fucking nasty. Uh I think TikTok's way bigger than I realize it is. Mm. Yeah. There's people in the cartel using it that's <laughs> yeah, pretty crazy. Generally, anytime someone in a cartel is doing something, I want to do it. Too. Yeah, mm. yeah. I mean, yeah, it's yeah. pretty cool. Drugs, it's, for yeah. sure. Sure. I don't care what drugs. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Human yeah. trafficking. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Tra- I love that. When in Rome, yeah. you know? Like, you yeah, know. I mean, I love travel. Yeah. Get yeah. me on a plane. Yeah. <laughs> after, I mean, after lockdown, it seems like insane not to do a little trafficking. 
That's, yeah, sure. Yeah, sure. That's what college kids are doing. Maybe that's why they're cool. It might yeah, be. They're, it they're might trafficking. Be. Hell yeah. I just can't. Uh, you got to show me this after because I want to see some of this cartel. Oh, TikTok so easily. Stuff. I'm a so big fan easy. of criminals doing uh, non criminal things. You know what I mean? I remember there was a well, kid. Like I, groceries? Or? Yeah, well, that, yeah, stuff like that, but like using the internet and stuff. It's kind of like when old people use the internet, even though criminals might not be old, but I, I like that. There was a kid. This was when Facebook like just started. This was like early Facebook end of mm. MySpace. A kid I went to school with, he was in juvenile hall. And uh, I remember he used to get to use the computer only on Sundays. And yeah. <laughs> the so, Lord's Day. Yeah. yeah. So he'd get a computer on Sundays and he would just write about the Patriots games on like his Facebook status. <laughs> and you wouldn't see it again until next Sunday. And in between, <laughs> it'd be like someone taking a picture with him and he was tagged. It was just, he's clearly incarcerated oh. oh my god i'm imagining just like the anticipation of just like waiting a whole week just to get those notifications oh, yeah. and then like serotonin rush these are the good old days oh yeah, yeah. early 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 facebook, facebook. people early. don't understand my friend used to do that with she used to write glee recaps and it's now occurring to me that we had very different childhoods sure. <laughs> oh my god i never watched glee you, know? you never watched glee no. can i wait can i tell you so i got Please. my first pedicure on sunday how was it it was extraordinary sure. it was so good but i was uh, i was sitting next to lee lan and lee uh turned to me and she was like lucas you're <laughs> that's the one impression i can do it's of lee accent. it's just her going lucas yeah she and does so do that. and so she um she said lucas you were a theater kid did you ever watch glee and I said, no. And she was like, why not? And I said, because I had standards. Yeah. <laughs> and then, like, the woman, like, two seats over, she was just like, I hear that. And, and then she, like, put up her hand, and I gave her, like, an air five. And I was like, hell yeah. And that woman was Leah Michelle. Feel <laughs> old yet? <laughs> I wouldn't I wouldn't be against Glee. I just feel like I just missed it. You know what? I feel yeah. like it just, I just didn't come into, like, my... It's too late now. Yeah, honestly. that's how I feel. Glee, I, yeah, I just it's never got into it. Way too late that's for how Glee. I feel. Even if I tried to, I tried to rewatch Glee, and I could, I couldn't. I was the biggest Gleek in the world. Imagine if someone treated Glee like The Sopranos. Like I just got into it. It's really deep. You know, <laughs> <laughs> there's a lot of layers to it. I can't. imagine if someone thought Glee was The Sopranos. <laughs> was it actually good though? At the, at the first two seasons, I think, were Because I remember it being a huge... De- I remember it being a big deal. It was corny. It was huge, yeah. yeah. It was... It was... Um, at first, it was kind of satirical and fun, and then it got really self-serious, and that's when it got really bad. I think that was around season, like, three or four. It got really bad. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. But it's... Uh, my friend would do that as if she was your incarcerated friend <laughs> she would write glee recaps every single week did you did you like the guys recaps were they good they're pretty funny i just remember it was always like yeah that game was bullshit that was a horse shit call <laughs> and like everyone knew it wasn't someone i was friends with <laughs> so much range yeah. talking about plays and then glee well just because we knew he was in jail you know what i yeah. mean like that i think that's really what like the funny part about it was like we would just imagine him typing like in a <laughs> g- in like a jail cell like like with the clinking bars behind him, even though I'm sure it wasn't that, but like that's what I think was so funny about it to us, you know? <laughs> oh my god, we liked it. Um, who were your like buddies uh, growing up? Like, what was what was the deal with your gang of hooligans? We were everyone was pretty good kids. No, no one I hung out with really directly was like a bad kid, so to say. No. Mm-hmm. Wait, so, uh, would you tell the people where? So, uh. Are, are you from like Boston or a nearby suburb? Where, so where are you I grew from? up in really in the city and outside the city. So my parents split up. I lived in South Boston like all the time for the first like 13 Is years of my Southie? life. Is that Southie? Yes. South. Oh, yes. shit. And then my parents got divorced. And then, uh, well, actually, then I still lived there. And then there your mom went Northie and yeah. your dad went South. Yeah, yeah pretty much north of Boston in Peabody, Massachusetts, a great fucking town, like uh, probably uh, 15 miles north of Boston. Mm-hmm. So that was a. Looking back, I don't think I realized it, but it was a bit of a culture shock in the like. We're not a culture shock, but I think kids just grow up so much different in the city than they do in the suburbs. And it was like I didn't really have friends in the suburbs until like I was like fucking seventeen, eighteen. So I was just always in the city doing stuff, you know. Yeah. And then you go to the suburbs, and everyone has huge houses as to apartments and things. Do you yeah. remember? Do you remember what that like first time you went into one of these houses was like? And you were like, "Holy shit!" Like, what was it? It was the house I ended up moving into. Honestly, oh, wow. Yeah, I got a. I grew up in an awesome house. You know what I mean? Um, 
I mean, I was like, I was never poor or anything. I never, you know what I mean? I always had, but it was just, just like the space, I feel yeah. like was the biggest yeah. thing is the actual space, you know? Uh, yeah, I had a fucking swimming pool in my backyard. You Damn. know what I mean? So Sick I was like, this is Wait, above ground or in, in ground? Dude. Oh. In ground. I like barely knew how to swim too. Yeah. I wasn't like a That's strong not... swimmer. You know what I mean? I was it's like... funny to think about an in ground pool in Boston, like in the driveway. Well, this is in the suburb. This is <laughs> oh, in the, in the suburbs. suburbs. This is in the right, suburb. Right, right. I don't, yeah. I mean, I'm sure people, someone actually, it, there's a house like in Salty that someone has a, a swimming pool inside their house. I, I've never been, but I, I know of it. Oh, oh shit. shit! I might have said too much. Whoa. Uh, but, yeah, but no. Drop the address. Let's yeah. <laughs> bum rush the house. Yeah. So, yeah. So I don't know. Uh, and then, but I'm grateful for that because it's like it. It. I like being around different. That's like my favorite thing about New York. It's like, dude, I there's every type of person here. You know what I yeah, mean? Yeah, for From sure. every different type of place. That's yeah. like my favorite part about New York by far. Yeah. yeah. Well, somebody. Okay. So one thing I wanted to ask you, learning more about you, is that um. So we know that you are very, very dedicated to acting. First, when did what was like your first exposure that really like made you think, "Oh, I want to do this"? So I was like uh, the first time, like when I really got into it. Yeah, I was in high school, and uh, I was like getting in trouble a lot in high school. Like, you what know what I mean? It? Let's talk about it. Uh, just <laughs> yeah, you know, like just talk. being perfect. Yeah, yeah. Fucking yeah. <laughs> no one could handle me. Uh, just Man, drop dead gorgeous. Yeah. It was like talking shit, honestly, where it was like I didn't like being told what to do, where it's like looking back on it, I'm like, I was probably pretty annoying. But it was like it was just like if a teacher told me to do something, I would just not do it or just do the complete opposite intentional. Mm. And then if once I got called out, I'd be like, no, fuck this. I'm not doing this, dude. This doesn't make sense. Like just really just run in my mouth. Um, I didn't really do anything like too serious. Uh I'm trying to think what I got in the most trouble. Yeah, I was always just running my mouth and fight, arguing, just constantly, just talking shit constantly. You know, like, I remember I wasn't supposed to wear hats. And could you guys wear hats in school? No, we no, couldn't. No, oh, no, my no. God. Why can't that you do that? that? They were like, it's distracting. They're what? like, we need to see your face. Yeah. We need to see your face. Um, I, even if you're wearing a beanie and it doesn't cover your face at all, they're like, we can't see your face. So like, are you blind, dude? Yeah, Fucking I don't get it. So it's like, just things like that. I'm like, why can't I wear a hat? And they'd always give me like, they would never give me like a straight answer for it. It would always be like. Because there is no answer. Yeah, exactly. No. So I was like. I remember, I, I do remember this one. So this is, so anyway, so I was getting in trouble. Yeah. And then my senior year of high school, they, I was in a drama class and an improv class that I didn't sign up for. <laughs> you know what I mean? How'd you get in there? So they, one of my teachers just put it on my schedule. So like the year before we were supposed to fill out our classes and one of my teachers put it on there, drama and improv. And it was the first two periods. And I was like classic, like, I was very popular in high school, and I had a lot of friends who were different types of people. And then I, I, I'm in there, and I was like, this is just not my fucking scene, dude. You know, mm. it was an improv class. And, like, dude, improv classes in high school are pretty similar to improv classes after high school. The same yeah. exact people. A lot of cardigans and, oh, yeah. like, uh, like people who seem to only kiss. Yeah. You know? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I know yeah. exactly. Yeah. So yeah, I, yeah. I'm talking about. Yeah. And it was so obvious the second I was in It's like, what the fuck am I doing here? <laughs> and then I realized... So then, of course, it was, like, the first day of school, and it was pretty much just, like, yes, and, zip, zab, zab all that shit. And I was yeah. like, how have I not been doing this for the last 15 fucking... You know what I mean? Like, this is amazing. I was, like, couldn't even believe it was school. I felt like I was not in school. And this was the first, like, two and a half hours of the day or whatever. And then I just wanted to just continue it. It was really just improv and stuff, and then I got into the acting later and stuff like that. But I, I was thinking, though. So we had... We had... Uh, <laughs> We had like, and we did this in my auditorium. We did my improv and acting. We had a nice auditorium in my school, Peabody High School. Shout out to Peabody High. Hey. Uh, yeah. Hey. So I was, uh, we were in there and we had another rule. You couldn't wear tank, you couldn't wear like tank tops in school, right? Like girls oh. couldn't wear like spaghetti or like wife beat and stuff oh, like yeah. that. that shit. You weren't allowed to wear them, right? Because it was too revealing. So this girl in class. She was younger, right? And uh, she was like, she's so to me again. They'd say it was inappropriate. I I don't find anything sexual about a tank top. You know what I mean? Like yeah, sure, no. So she's sitting in front of me. I remember she's always sitting like the top row in the back. And one of the uh, I was like a dean. This lady comes in. She's like a housemaster lady. She comes in. She's like Kelsey up here with me. 
And she's like, why? She's like, you can't wear that shirt in school. It's ridiculously inappropriate. And so she's walking up the stairs. Now she's walking by me. I was like, oh, Jesus. Like, I was going to go home and jerk off to the thought of your shoulders sitting in front of me. <laughs> and I said it like so. And then it was just like everyone in class. It, got a, it fucking killed. But then it was like I got sent home from school. It was oh like this big God. thing. I was like, dude, it was so funny. I remember my teacher like. Mr. K, he was like trying not to laugh, dude. <laughs> That's good. Yeah, he was like the best teacher, and he's like, "Well, you can't say things like that, you know." But I was like, it, it, "That's the type of stuff I feel like I was getting in trouble for." It was just right. like kind of like childish mischiefy type stuff but yeah. that's such a that's that's like i'm glad to hear that because that no you had a good teacher you had a cool teacher who like was constrained by the rules himself oh yeah he was the yeah. best he was the best he was he and he really was the, the mystic harry he was like the first one who really told me to like yeah like those thoughts on making funny remarks and like where that comes from he's like push that and go towards it constructively where like i didn't think that was like appropriate i didn't i don't know i was mm. like so young i didn't think that was like a thing you yeah. know that's so important so then did the desire to act and do comedy kind of come at the same time like performing kind of all it was improv first it, yeah. was, okay. it was improv so i was doing improv like then after i went to improv asylum in boston mm -hmm. um and it was a couple years off i remember after high school i just didn't really f i don't know i was just really not doing much and i was mm -hmm. like i miss doing that so i went i started doing improv classes and then i was like oh fuck it i'll do an acting class and then next thing i knew i was like in a class like five nights a week before i realized it because i wanted to be you know right. what i mean i was like shit um, and then i realized after like a year like a uh, probably two years i was like i need to get out of boston i want to do this more because i was just really i was bartending and I was making good money and having fun but i was like kind of getting sick of the partying aspect of it mm. and i was like so then I just came to New York and I've been having fun. And then I did stand up in New York and now that's like all what I want to do. You what, know? what was like, what was, what was the catalyst that made you think I need to try stand up specifically? I was in a nut. I was in like an improv troupe and it was at, it was at the producers club actually. Oh, yeah. Oh my yeah. God. And I didn't, and there was stand up going on in the producers club. This is like three years ago. And, uh, I saw them doing it and I was like, yeah, I want to do that. And then I just went one day after class and did it. And then I was like addicted. I was like, whoa, I need to do that. Do you I'm, remember what material you did the first time? No, I can't remember. I, I can't remember. I didn't. I'm, I don't have that one recorded because it was such like an out of body experience, like any type mm. of performance. But the one thing with stand up as like any other performance I ever had was like it's I saw myself doing it from the corner of the room. That's like whoa. maybe the only thing the only time that's ever happened in my life where it's like. I saw myself doing something where it was like, I was literally in like, like stage left high to the corner looking down. That's like the only time. Okay. Straws. Yeah, <laughs> yeah exactly. Stage well, left. no, cause yeah. you know what I'm like? That's where no, it looks yeah. stage right actually. But that's where but, like looking down, I was like, I could see myself doing it. And then I was like, I remember afterwards, I like couldn't. Sleep. I was the like, adrenaline for it. Oh, I like the I, idea that you see yourself as like a, like a play script, like interior, yeah, uh, oh, five p.m. Yeah. So it was kind of like, and then I was just like, I can't. Uh, and then I just couldn't focus. And then I remember like it was during like Christmas vacation for school, and that's all I was doing every day. Then and I was like, I don't even want to go to school. But then I went back to school. I was like, well, acting's still pretty fun too. Yeah. Yeah, I think the the. Acting and comedy, they're kind of different because, like, with acting, I think there's less of an immediate buzz. Yeah. I think, mm. like, I feel like sometimes I come home after a set and I'm, like, I'm, like, wired. Even if Yo, it's, like, yeah. 1 a.m. and oh, I'm exhausted, totally. you know? Like, yeah, absolutely. sometimes I can't even, sometimes I have to, I hate doing it, but sometimes, if I, especially, like, I have to, I can't even sit down after I just perform. And I always try to stay there for, like, a couple people after, but I'm just, like, I need to walk around. Or like yeah. sometimes it's so strong where it's like I don't even want to talk to people. You know what it's I mean? It's kind of like, like how if you're running for a bit, you can't go immediately to stopping. You need to at least walk yeah. for yeah. a hundred percent. And yeah. I think you especially because your energy on stage is you're very like active with the stage. I mean, some performers they just like stand there and deadpan it, but I yeah. feel like you're like moving around and doing stuff. So it's probably like a even bigger adrenaline. Rush. Yeah, and it can be. It's so exhausting performing. You know mm. what I mean? Like performing itself, like. You always hear like like you know physical exhaustion and mentally exhausted. Like performing is just like I feel like both of those so much. You know what I mean? Like sometimes I'll do like if I do like four or five sets in a day and they're all like so, even if they're not, but just I just feel like the amount because it's all I think about. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? All I think about is 
stand like what the subject is you know it's all i think about so then when you like perform it it's just like dude that was fucking insane and it's like a crazy thing i heard someone say one time that the thrill you get from doing stand-up or that adrenaline you get from doing stand-up for the first time that always happens you just get more used to it yeah oh. and i think that might be i'm not sure if that's that true. sounds pretty right at least yeah i, would I agree. like that because it's I would crazy agree. like you can't like you said you can't run and just like you do stand up and it's just like what the hell just happened you know what i mean yeah, yeah. you're so like in a different world you know but yeah. it's the best feeling in the world i know? got a question so like you said that you like you feel like you're just so like so wired but it's also like so exhausting for you how does exhaustion manifest like for me like when i'm really if i like put all my i put i give all my all on stage and then i'm tired my version of being tired is i don't want to talk for a little bit my yeah. ability to make words like goes down and i need a break from doing that what is the thing you feel like you don't want to do for like a little bit right after usually talk to people or Same, like yeah. have people ask me about it right away i did a set like yeah. last week and some girl came up to me and she was talking to me and I was like, I just didn't want to talk. And I wasn't going to be a lot of times I used to, oh, I'm getting better at it. But a lot of times like, I don't want to talk right now. You know what I mean? Because mm. it's like a thing. And I feel like a lot of performers should understand it, but people are like, Oh, he was kind of an, ass. I just did it. But she, anyway, she told me after she's like, are you high? And I was like, no. <laughs> but then I looked back and I was like, well, I guess it makes sense because maybe I was and I wasn't high, but it's like, well, I was in a different mind state while I was doing it. Right. So I guess it's more so like similar to that where it's like I kind of want to just be left alone. And like I love going outside right after I perform and just breathing fresh air. Mm. That's, you good. know, that's that like my favorite. Thing. I feel the opposite of you guys. I like after a set. I don't like talking about the set, mm -hmm. but I like talking. I like having a normal conversation that doesn't relate to what I just did at all. Yeah. Mm. Like I like okay. I like when a friend comes to see a comedy show and then we go out and I'm like, so how's work? <laughs> like <laughs> for me, that's very soothing because I, I don't know. I can I don't know if you guys feel this, but like sometimes I feel like the other people think doing stand up is so weird. Like it's our whole lives, you know, but they're other... not exactly wrong. Though. Yeah, they're, yeah. I mean, they're right. Yeah, they're right. But, but, Sometimes I want to feel like a normal. I want to feel like yeah. a normal girl. Yeah, you know? exactly. <laughs> I want to go where the people are. Yeah. <laughs> Not doing stand up in their offices. How yeah. about you, Lucas Arnold? Well, um, like, oh well, I. You what, don't like talk. You don't like talk. You, yeah, no, I. At least for I'm think I'm very similar to you that I want to like decompress. I want yes. some fresh air. I want to walk around just a little bit, just to sort of like flush out my senses mm -hmm. almost. Is it a boy thing? Is it like jerking it? Yeah, <laughs> this is a, this is a penis activity that this we're talking about right here. Penis activity. heaven activity. I have a question though, like because yeah. she kind of said on you, you kill on TikTok, right? So you kill. Now, do you feel that satisfaction? Right? We um, shouldn't bring up the murders. <laughs> <laughs> we shouldn't bring that up. Yeah, yeah. X-rated TikTok. Uh, <laughs> yeah. But do you feel? When do you get your satisfaction from say? anything you put on Instagram or TikTok is it a do you know when you film something like this is a fucking banger right here I okay this is what it's like for me so like I'll make a video and then within like 15 minutes to half an hour I will go to check its performance and I'll try to reply to some comments to yeah. drive interaction and then maybe once or twice I'll check to see how it's doing and then I never think about it again really and I don't I don't look to see so how well. healthy yeah. <laughs> no no Fuck. typical is... man running from his problem yeah, yeah come on face it yeah. face your videos no this is like learned behavior because I because it's because like I got into it in quarantine and I also like I live here I live alone and so like I it's it's very easy for me to get like hyper focused and obsessed sure and I it was like it was not healthy for me and I was like oh I need to create a boundary for myself but and how do you know like how do you know when because I take it not everything's in one take right oh no 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 yeah no. I so how do you like, know when you're just like you just know when you watch it, like, oh, I just nailed it. Well, you say that, but the thing is, like, I had that recently where I did, like, a, a little bit of, like, a Seinfeld impression talking about, like, this song. Because there was a song called, dance too much booty in the pants, dance. <laughs> and there was, like, that was, like, going off on TikTok, and I was like, what even is too much booty in the pants? <laughs> I saw that. I actually yeah. saw yeah. that. <laughs> but, like... But the thing is, like, it didn't do that well, and I was convinced that I nailed it. I thought this is gonna, this is gonna, do, and it didn't do that <laughs> yeah. well. It's because Jerry's little fans 
came after you. It, uh, they they did did they and actually they, no they did yes no. Okay. <laughs> um, everything I say on this podcast is true yeah. absolutely yeah <laughs> I've never lied this <laughs> is this podcast is a documentary um. <laughs> <laughs> I've been doing a joke lately about having a podcast like a where it goes like a you know my private conversations. Yeah, I consider those art. <laughs> and then I told that to my therapist and she was like, don't, you know, self-deprecate. Like your podcast is art. And I was like, okay, well now I know you haven't listened. So that's, yeah. that's it. That's funny. Technically, she wouldn't be wrong though. I know. And that's the thing. I am so self-deprecating. What do you have against yourself, Gabby? I, right now? No. <laughs> well, let's first, go back to first, therapy. Whoa. <laughs> Gabby, I don't, I don't say this often, but this sort of this angle you have on yourself, it's anti-Semitic. I'm going to say it. <laughs> I hate Jews, but only <laughs> myself. <laughs> I, I like all other Jews, but me, you know? I feel like I've heard yeah. a lot of Jewish comedians say that. They've used the term... Uh, Self, what that they hate me? That they, yeah, that they all they hate. Gabby. Can't stand other Jews, or they can't stand. Uh, I forget the term. Someone had a bit. It was called a self, self-hating Jew, self, yeah. something like that. There, yeah, there's, there's a lot of that. Yeah, it's yeah. a big thing with the different branches. Like the Orthodox uh, hate the Reform Jews because we like wear shorts, and then um, Reform Jews hate the Orthodox because they like want their own ambulances. My friend worked at a. Uh, <laughs> they want their own ambulance. They want their. Yeah. It's true. They want their own ambulances. Really? My friend worked at like a group home. Maimonides. Yeah. <laughs> uh, what did you say? <laughs> Maimonides. 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 Isn't that a, a Jewish hospital ambulance thing? Or am, am I making this I up? I have no idea. Is it Hezbollah? <laughs> Wait, no, I'm not kidding. I thought that was what it was called. Oh my no. god! Are all the ambulance are all the ambulance drivers the Hasidic Jews have? Are they um or the Orthodox are Orthodox Jews and Hasidic Jews the same? No, they're not. There are Orthodox Jews that Hatzala. are not Hasidic. Hezbollah. Hezbollah is a terror. Oh my god. <laughs> what, yeah. What's Hezbollah? What is that? Hezbollah. Is Hezbollah is like a terrorist organization. Yeah. We Okay, so this is going to be one of those things like Aaron texts me about and is like, so all three of you are fucking morons. <laughs> oh, my God. Um, no, look, Maimonides Medical Center. It's a thing. Oh, it is? Yeah. I'm such a bad Jew. I'm so sorry. But yeah, my friend worked at this group center and she said that like, they were like, don't call 911 if someone gets hurt. Call the Jewish ambulance. What's and that she, number? She was like, I'm not going to fucking memorize the number. Yeah. You know yeah. what mem number I'm going to memorize? 911. Yeah. Wait, are they free? The Jewish ones? I mean, they're Jews, so you fill it in. Yeah, we got to donate to Cars for Kids yeah. in, order to get, <laughs> yeah. in order to get I a, actually, I a assume, nice Jewish I assume ambulance. they're free. It'd be crazy if they weren't I free. love the idea of Jewish moms being like, I just want my daughter to get a nice Jewish ambulance. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> do do people in Boston dislike each other? I thought you were about to say, do the Bostonians like Jews? <laughs> <laughs> do people in Boston like, do you like me? Are Ryan? they tolerated? Yeah, yeah. You, 100%. <laughs> you know, you're all right. You know, you're all right. You know, uh, Lukewarm on the subject. From other neighborhoods, yeah, they like. I remember when I was a kid, we used to just like fight kids from other neighborhoods for no for, for no reason other than the fact that we were from different neighborhoods. Did you? Okay. Can you tell us about a fight you got into? Uh, let me think. Yeah, I usually got my ass kicked like every single time. Okay. I I never wanted to fight, dude. You know what I mean? Like yeah. I never wanted to fucking fight. Like even in high school, I got my ass just kicked in they, high just school. Just when I thought I was at, they pulled me. Yeah, back. and it's like. Cause I'm I I feel like one I'm, I'm really not that tough you know what I mean like and that I'd always just end up especially in Boston like when I was young it would it wouldn't even just be like a regular fight it would be like fucking twenty five versus twenty and it would just be like ridiculous but uh let me see a fight I got in uh, one time we were playing Truth or Dare and uh, all these kids came up and we knew immediately they were from a different neighborhood. and they just started running their mouth and it was like me my cousin. Uh, my my buddy Chris. There was like probably five, f yeah, five or six of us, I'd say. And there was about like fourteen or fifteen of these kids. And I was like, let's just get the fuck out of here. Let's go mm. home. No one say anything. And, let's, and of course, someone, not me, but someone from my group of friends. I can't remember. I was ten, eleven years old. Someone started talking shit. And then uh, 
Yeah, and then it was just like I never had a shot. That was kind of the that was a lot of the fights I got in. Looking back, I never really had a chance. I was so small, and I never really wanted to fight. That being said, though, I also talked a lot of shit. Like I got my I got the shit kicked out of me a few times, and looking back at it, I absolutely deserved it because I just <laughs> should have never fucking said anything. You know what I mean? Oh my. God. Uh, one time there was a kid I went to high school. Then this was in the suburbs. This kid was like claiming to be a blood in high school. And uh, exactly, it was this a kid who lived in a very nice neighborhood, and I oh my called him out on it, and they wanted me to like issue in an apology and all this shit, and then I just was roasting them on Facebook, like, and it was killing on Facebook. Oh, Everyone's sure. like, "Dude, yeah. this is hilarious." It was like 2011, and uh, and then the next day in school, I got my ass kicked in the hallway, but oh. so still was a blood. Still, I don't know, but, yeah, <laughs> still worth it. Same kid. Like, texted me, like, seven years later and apologized. I was like, oh, thanks, dude. Oh, that's nice. Yeah. Oh, that's After so he's sweet. been arrested, like, 15 times, and yeah. I think he's hooked on oh, heroin. Wow. But I wish the um. best for him. <laughs> you know? I do. I don't hold any ill will. It was pretty funny <laughs> looking back. But he's living his best life. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. Wait, Gabby, did you ever uh, get into altercations or, or, like, be in close quarters with a fight? Um, Lucas, I'm sure you may know this, but I went to LaGuardia High School for the Performing and Creative Arts um, where the only fight that was happening that I knew about was between these two kids who were fighting over a girl and they kept having to push the fight back because one of the guys had dance class. Yeah. <laughs> oh my God. He was like, bro, I can't, I have dance. Yeah. I'm sorry. And he oh. kept delaying the fight because he had dance. He and just, then yeah. when they finally fought, um, you know those fights, Ryan, where it feels like I'm not including you in this, Lucas, because I don't know if you know those fights. I I feel like we've spoken about the fact that you've never been in a physical fight. I feel slightly judged, but go on. Have you been in a physical fight? <laughs> I've then? not. No. I, I, come on. I have. I have like you. witnessed a fight though. I, that was like Ooh. it was. Uh, I can I can talk about it. I'll talk about it in a second. But okay. there's um there's these fights where both people lose and then they both say they won. Yeah. And that's what oh, happened. Yeah. Both of the kids were talking shit after they were like fucking crushed him and like they're they're both of them had like fucked up ears and like a black <laughs> eye or something and like clearly they both fought and you know what the girl was with one of the guys the whole time like it didn't change oh that's what they were fighting over a girl they were fighting over a girl it didn't and it didn't move the needle <laughs> yeah you know was she watching like keeping score the like... girl wasn't gonna be like all right well that's one for tyler yeah. and two for joey it's like a I penguin probably change their name like yeah. you won like but like <laughs> They wait. She's waiting to see who the dominant one is to leave. You know. What? What? Fight? And then she gets the pile of rocks. Exactly. <laughs> what? What fight did you see, Lucas Arnold? When I was, uh, I was, uh, I was at a friend's house in Marine Park. Uh, oh, have you been yeah. to Marine Park? No. Where's that? It's kind of like it's sort of it's a residential neighborhood in Brooklyn. So it's kind of like suburby. I was visiting a friend of mine, and she had a friend of hers who went to Catholic school, and there was like there was like drama just in Marine Park because there was like opiates being sold, mm -hmm. and um, <clears throat> my friend uh, and her friend they didn't like this was going on, and she was and my friend uh, I don't want to let I don't want to say either of their names, so let's call them uh, Janet Jackson, who's my friend from high school, and. Uh, Latoya, who's the one who's gonna fight? <laughs> a so, fight amongst family. What a bitter oh yeah. feud. So my friend Janet Jackson, she was like, "Okay, we're gonna go see a fight, Lucas." And I was like, "Okay." <laughs> like, and so we just we left, and uh, and uh, I was like, "Who's fighting?" And she was like, "Latoya and this girl who's like selling uh, opiates. Who uh, we don't like her. She's like, she's ruining lives of our friends. We need to teach her a lesson." I was like, "Okay." I was like, <clears throat> "I was like, you know, I can't like." jump in they were like we're not expecting you to <laughs> and uh and i watched like i watched latoya she she destroyed this chick well probably because the chick was on heroin <laughs> no she was not on heroin come on you're not gonna fight when you're on heroin no, um no she was too coordinated to be on heroin okay um, fair enough but um but it was it was honestly like amazing to watch it was a little bit you know when you like first see john wick and it's just like it's so choreographed and amazing yeah, 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 yeah. that's what this fight yeah. was like where i was just like dude and like latoya afterwards like after she like so easily won um i was just like can i hug you i was just so moved by yeah. i was just by how well she fought she was like sure and i was like where'd you learn that she was just like i'm dominican like she was <laughs> she was like those are my credentials and nice. i was like i believe you no. um yeah. it was in new york know how to fight oh, totally yeah. she was awesome yeah haven't i haven't seen her in a while but i every now and again i see her on social media i'm just like keep thriving 
God damn it, my landline. I cannot oh. believe Lucas has a landline. I know. Dude. Actually, I can believe. Yeah, yeah, you know what? Not a total shocker. If I was going to roast Lucas, my roast joke would be Lucas looks like he has a landline. 100%. <laughs> this motherfucker. Who was it? Uh, it was Lisa calling from Delaware BPO. I have no idea what the fuck that is. Are they calling about your car's extended warranty? Oh. Why yeah. do people keep making that joke? I keep hearing. I know people Because there's spam calls everywhere. Yeah. People Everyone being... gets them. I think I, I probably get them too. Yeah. But you, but you just, wait, do you not like answer those or? A lot. Uh, no, I usually don't. If I don't recognize a number, I don't answer it. That's good. That's so Gen Z I feel you. like because, yeah, but I feel like because so much of it, actually looking back at it yeah it was just robots from like the marriott hotel so to say or something like that you know mm. what i mean yeah. yeah are you our age how you're are you? wait how you're 27 or you're 28 now should i how old are you guys um i am we're 14? of age am i we're old of age <laughs> am I'm, le I'm legal am i <laughs> am i old no, I think I'm old. I think I may be the oldest one here. I was thinking I'm 28 years old. I'm 28 as well. Yeah. Okay. I'm 26. Okay. I don't know if you've I'm been feeling this baby. way. You're yeah. so small. Yeah. I feel like old, when I started doing comedy, I was like 25 or so. Same. And mm. everyone, it felt like everyone around me was around that age. And now I feel like everyone doing comedy is 22. And I feel ancient. Yeah. yeah. I don't, I, I, I was thinking about it the other day. I'm like, am I an old person? Because like, I remember thinking of someone who was 28 years old, like, I don't know, 10 years ago, and being like, that's a fucking adult. Like, that's oh, yeah. a grown-ass, kids-at-home, mortgage adult. You know what I mean? Oh, I can. T I remember just, like, thinking, like, 20... In my mind, like, a 28-year-old 20 years ago is so much older. Just, like, in, ter totally. in terms of, like, their life experience and shit. Like, I was actually, last Christmas or something, I was talking to my cousin, Ella, and we have, he's technically our uncle, but he's basically a cousin just because of like his age. And like at 24, he had like his first kid. Like yeah. he was just like, he was very accomplished. Already. I can remember, was, I yeah. can remember my parents when they were my age. So wow. I think that's why I think of, I, now I know everything's so different, but I think that's why I think like, am I old? I've been thinking about yeah. it a lot recently. Like if I'm old. Do you? Did How old were your parents when they had you? They were older. My mom was thirty nine. Oh wow! Okay. Yeah. Did you? I was gonna ask. Did you have young parents? Yeah, my mom's like twenty years, twenty one years older than me. Twenty years older than me. Twenty one years older than me. Yeah. And what about your dad? Same age. What an age gap! If I was like I seventy, my dad's seventy years. <laughs> my dad's like fifty five <laughs> years older than my mother. Uh, you know. I don't know that your mom should have been raising you with such an age gap. It feels, yeah. like a, it feels like kind of, but a I think about it though. I'm Canceled. Like, yeah, I'm like I re like, d yeah, I can like remember. I'm like, dude, my mom was my age during like 9/11. You know what I mean? Like oh I can God. remember that. So what, your mom is not yet 50. No. Damn. She hot. She, yeah, she. Yeah, yeah, she's so bad, so you I'm got bad. a hot mom. Yeah, I got a hot mom. You got a smoking hot mom. I'm Yo, Ryan, would you would you fuck your mom? <laughs> <laughs> Again, not with the age gap. Yeah, come yeah, on. yeah come, on. come on. But yeah, I, I've been thinking about it. Progressive. I don't know if it's a problem. I've been thinking about it a lot where I've never really thought before if I'm old. Mm. What is your, like, what specific things do you wonder about it? I don't, like, if I'm, I guess not too much, but I'm, like, thinking, I'm like, am I cool? You know what I, you know yeah, what I mean? Yeah. It's like, am I doing old people shit? You know what I mean? Like, mm. you know, because some, like, yeah, like, sometimes I want to stay out till three in the morning doing comedy, but then other times I'm like, kind of want to go to sleep you know yeah. oh yeah well now yeah. like i'll uh, the other day i had i had five drinks right over the course of like three hours so i didn't really feel any buzz other than you get from like having one drink and the next morning i woke up and i felt like shit after uh, having five drinks that happens you know yeah. and i was like and it's the same if i have two drinks you know what i mean like and i'm like what the fuck? Oh, so you might as well just have five then. That, well yeah i might yeah. as well have 15 you know what i mean but i was like why yeah what's going on here you know I don't even mean this as a PSA, like, against alcohol, because I do drink, but I do think, like, I had, like, a gin and tonic last night, mm -hmm. and I felt I felt the marked difference between before I had the gin and tonic and after the gin and tonic. Oh, yeah. In mm -hmm. my body, I felt more lethargic. Yes. I've been trying not to drink before I do a set, 
Not, oh yeah, no, I never yeah, do that. Like After a that. set, I'll get a drink. Sure. Yeah, yeah, that's great. But it's um, not because it's like gonna fuck up my material or something, or I'm gonna forget jokes. It's just because my I feel like my energy changes. It saps even, your energy. Yeah, even absolutely. One drink, yeah, I feel well, like because sluggish. it saps you of a lot of nutrients. That's the thing. It also dehydrates you. It just it drains a lot from your body, and so. Yeah, that was that was something that my dad told me very young is that he was like, get like he always said that if you go out drinking, have some water before yeah, you go to game, bed. It is a game changer. Always make sure you have some water before you go to bed. I've never had a hangover. Water's great. Nobody's talking about I water. Know. It's yeah. like we needed to survive or something. Yeah, you know it's what yeah. like I mean? it's our whole body. It's true though. It's like we we it's like it's so known that we literally need water to survive and like not I don't do it enough when I drink where it's like yeah. why wouldn't I just have cuz a couple weeks ago I did have like it was during a Patriots game over the course of a day. I probably had like 20 to 25 beers, right? <laughs> oh, it, mind you, it was over the course of like 10 hours, though. So it was like, again, I'm not saying it was like, I'm not a fucking health. I'm just saying. I, I had like oh 25 beers, but I also had like seven or eight Pedialytes. And the next morning I woke okay. up, no headache, no nothing, but still like my body. It felt like my arm weighed like 72 pounds. You wow. know what I mean? Just shit like that. My back hurt. <laughs> Ryan, can I just ask you this question? Can you picture me drinking 20 to 25 beers in a day? No, I couldn't. Exactly. <laughs> because every time I've seen you drink, you're drinking like a fucking Bon Viv or like <laughs> <laughs> It's true, dude. You're always like, you, you're my, every time I've seen you drink, which has been a, uh, I feel like a good enough. Just call time, him gay and go. No, I'm like, it's, you, I seem like you drink pretty responsibly when you do drink. A yeah. Bon Viv. A yeah. Bon, that was so perfect. Haven't you drank? <laughs> Is that what, what did you used to get? You used to get some. I I would I would bring those a lot to Wobbly. Lana. I remember I would bring those a lot. Yeah, because uh, you're more of a high noon. Yeah, <laughs> high noon's a fucking. Aw those things are awesome, dude. Yeah, Bon I Viv's yeah. good. I like Bon Viv too. Yeah, 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 I like those too. To me, it goes high noon, Bon Viv, um, and then um, I actually really like from... White Claws. I really like them. Ah, uh, it's like the perfect amount of like sweetness to me. It's like it's refreshing. The I black love cherry them. one's amazing. Oh, the oh, black cherry yeah. one's good. The black yeah. cherry one's so good. Yeah, but there's certain White Claws I don't get. What's the one? A lot of people don't like the mango. I love the mango. Yeah, for me, it's like uh, water from the Delaware River, and then. <laughs> the white claw mango but the white claw black cherry is good yeah I, li I like white claw but i've never i also feel that see it's shit like that right i feel like white claw is a early 20s person drink you know what i mean yeah. i don't i feel like like cider and all that shit wasn't like not cider fucking seltzer it kind of was certain ones i feel like it, it's that didn't come out until very recently yeah exactly and i feel like it was already past my point of like i drink every friday and saturday you know yeah. mm. it's it's the it's things like that where it's like it makes me feel like am i too old even though i know i'm not old you know and then i think yeah. about it I go, what's it even matter i do comedy you know it's not like yeah it's shit like that you know if that even makes sense you know what i mean i don't know when did you start like thinking about like uh, like your own age was it just this year or was it something that happened like probably like year? last maybe like last year maybe i don't know yeah. yeah 27 yeah i'd say 20 yeah like 26 27 where i was like i feel like 25 was the last year i felt young yeah, yeah. you know i definitely had a thing like when i turned 26 i was like oh i'm getting close to 30 now i was yeah. like, that was a big realization that was yeah I remember Vanessa Jackson, she said it, she's the best, but she said it where she said she had one of her jokes. I don't want to ruin it to say it on here, but she pretty much said like she was like 28 or 29 or however she was, but she felt like she was like appropriating 20s culture by not being in her 30s or something. I forget exactly. <laughs> and I was like, I know exactly what the fuck she's talking about. Yeah. So I know great. exactly what she's talking about because like, yeah, I'm in my 20s, but I feel like I'm in my 30s. Yeah. Yeah. But then I'm also extremely immature too. So that I yeah. feel like the eight, the number is telling me I'm old and then all my behaviors are like, what's going on? What were your other ailments after you drank 25 beers at the Patriots? It's just like, <laughs> sleeping like i'll sleep all day like all day i love that you said your back hurt after the yeah. hops of the beer it hurt your back I, i'm dead serious my body will just hurt yeah i, I, I you guess know. you need that to get through a boston sports game kind of, oh, yeah. yeah i, I maybe how I move, dare you i move yeah. Yeah. Okay. maybe i I, I'm, I think i'm a physical person when i'm just sitting down sometimes but yeah that, that didn't happen to me i used to dude i used to drink all the time and then go to work the next day and like 
I was like, oh, whatever. Drink a lot of yep. water, have Pedialyte, stay hydrated. Yeah. Take a well, cold yeah, also, shower. I mean, you can see like like little kids, they'll like fall over, maybe they hurt themselves, and then they just <laughs> spring right, right back up, and then they're just fine afterwards. Like, it's just... There's a flexibility. Yeah. That you can... I thought you were going to say you see little kids drinking. They don't think anything <laughs> of it. Yeah, exactly. You know, when they go back to the mine, you yeah. know. Yeah, oh, that's as as it should be. Exactly. You know, we got to bring back child labor. I know. I've been saying it for years. I've... <laughs> This is what this pod is all about. Yeah, exactly. I I call it just early work study. Uh, yeah. Everyone who writes in under 14, have you thought about uh, getting a job mining coal? Yeah. Exactly. Maybe next time you eat lunch, you should be- Black s- Lung builds character. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> eat lunch on a high beam 60 stories above the city for me one time, please. <laughs> Isn't that a crazy picture? When that you- yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's I heard someone say that the other day. Like, that's a crazy picture talking about like that famous- And then I thought about it and I was like- that's fucking insane. And then the fa- like that's insane if you saw adults doing that. And then I'm like, dude, those kids are like third. Like, I-, I don't even know how old. Oh my god, I never even thought about their age. They were probably so much younger yeah, than they were. Yeah, that's no so much. You didn't younger. have to be thir- fourteen to get a job back then. Well, they were doing it to avoid the you know the triangle shirtwaist factory fire. <laughs> yeah. When when the fire happened, those mm-hmm. kids were like, "Let me get up as high as I can." And then they brought out a sandwich. They were like, oh, I got to eat some lunch. I'm hungry. I don't think the move when there's a fire is to get onto higher ground. Um, well, they're young. They wouldn't know. Oh, you know? that's true. They're- I just think, like, be- imagine being, like, the dude in the middle. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> like, that's insane. Like, what if so? I could never imagine that. One that's, of them didn't want to be there, for sure. Could you he- imagine the dude in the middle, compl- uh, like, listening to a dude complaining about being in the middle seat on a plane? Oh, yeah, I know. I know. <laughs> That was me a couple weeks ago. I hate. I was in the middle seat and I was acting like a oh, fucking yeah. baby the entire time. Oh, I was. No. I, I went. I was. Uh, I went to the UK to visit family in August, and on the way back, I was in the aisle seat. But the dude who was getting ready to go into the middle seat, he looked at me. He was like, "Oh, can we switch?" And I was just like, "No." Yeah. I was, yeah. Whose man's is you? I was. Yeah. I was. <laughs> <laughs> Whose man's is this? How was yeah. the right? How How was his reaction? Oh, I. I. I don't even remember. He was. He had a very thick Indian accent, and he didn't look at me for some reason. Yeah. And the, he was just like, oh, can we switch? Like, he expected me. I was like, oh. and I was like, no. And then he just went into his seat, and he just didn't. I didn't see any emotional reaction on his face. Yeah, I mean, I guess it's worth a shot, you know? I guess. Yeah, maybe you should have asked. Yeah. But no. Get the, get the, do you like the window no, or the No, who you're asking. Aisle. Oh, aisle, like, definitely. I, like I care. Yeah. When you're little, you you love the window seat. You can see. You can see cause it it's, still so is much. awesome, though. The window oh, still seat great, still yeah. is awesome. But, like, as far as, like, comfort. Leg room th- ma- matters yeah, more now. Yeah, absolutely. Yes, totally. And yeah. proximity to peeing. Exactly. Yeah, oh, totally. I get exactly. up so much. Yeah. 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 I get up so much on flights. You, you big pee head? <laughs> I, I mean, I am, but I feel like it's more so, like, I like... I'll just walk to the front and then walk back. Like I like moving around. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, it's tough for me to stay seated for seven hours, six hours, whatever it takes to Los Angeles. It's tough for me to That's just, a lot. you know. Yeah. How was your experience? Like, uh, your your most recent experience in LA? Fucking aw- dude, the place is amazing. Yeah. I love it. I love doing comedy there. I love the people there. Mm-hmm. I love the weather. I, I love everything about it. Yeah. I love it so much. Yeah. It's really it's really a fun place it's out there. It's awesome. Yeah. Did, did, you, S, did SB have the uh, same opinion? Like, she also loves she going loves out? It. Yeah, she likes it as well. But I think she's on the same page as me where it's, I'm this, I love New York. I, I, I can't picture myself living anywhere else. But if I had to move to Los Angeles, I wouldn't fight against it at all right yeah. i'd be like oh I mean, i'm the same if i like had to move i definitely yeah would. if i but, got um, a, yeah it's awesome i've yeah. also never been to la i've still never been it's a great place yeah i can't recommend it enough if someone would drive me around well that's mm. now then yeah. that's yeah that there trevor. is trevor oh shit you know my bit about the guy who drove me yeah. and my girlfriend and around didn't, yeah, yeah 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 oh man that was honestly the bit. best time i've ever had in my life yeah. it was so the three I of us I don't know what it is, but he was so okay with, tr- at least visibly, he was so visibly okay with driving this <laughs> couple of hot floozies just six hours. Couple at a of time. lesbos. Couple of lesbos. Yeah. yeah. Um, bisexuals. Do yeah. not erase us. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> okay. 
Together we make one lesbo and one heterosexual. I just wanted to say lesbo. Lesbo's yeah. a great word. It is a good I word. I feel like I haven't said it since like I was in like the fifth grade. Yeah, I'm you like, lesbo. <laughs> <laughs> it kind of sounds like Dumbo. Yeah, like, it's a good yeah, one. you lesbo. It's like a bad word, so to say, but it's really not. You it's know? really yeah. funny. It's so childish. It I sounds like more... an old timey Pokemon. Hey, lesbo. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it is. It is. Lesbo like that. evolves into a lesbian. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> With enough points. Lesbander. <laughs> <laughs> Lesbander is using feelings. Yeah. It is highly effective. <laughs> Man, I Lesbander don't... used you haul. Yeah. <laughs> Being in a relationship with a woman is so weird because you'll like talk about the feelings you're having about your feelings about the other person, and then feelings. you have your own feelings, and then you have your own feelings. I'm yeah. like, fuck, I don't want to have so many. I've been in my non sentimental era. I've been in like, I don't mm. want to have so many feelings. Yeah. I don't know how you feel about feelings. I mean, you, I I, like you have only yourself you like, to blame. You, yeah. Well, you're an actor. Yeah, you oh, like that's, what I lo- that's why I love feelings. You love feelings? Mm, yeah. What's your favorite thing about feelings? What's your favorite feeling? What's your favorite feeling? Uh, favorite feeling? Rank, <laughs> on rank the feelings. Uh, happiness. Um, Sad- sadness is low. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> don't, you know that. But I, I don't know. I like feeling feelings. You know what I mean? And then I like performing on them. Okay. Yeah. You know, I feel like that's the way I was taught as an actor. So I love doing it in stand up. Which sometimes it's like when it's wrong and it's a disaster, like, and I'm like, oh, I'm all depressed today. Let me go do stand up. Sometimes it can work. But then when it doesn't work, it's like, oh, yeah, I just made everyone sad and creeped everyone out or scared <laughs> people. But that's funny to me. You know what I mean? Even though I don't yeah. realize it till after, you know? I, oh, yeah. I do like when you're on stage how you're just very honest about what the crowd is feeling. It's and it, fun. I th- yeah, it is oh, yeah. fun. It's so fun. Yeah. I love feel. I like. I I like feeling. Especially, I think a reason I like it a lot is because until I like did stand up and like went to acting school, I was like a classic dude where I was like, I'm just gonna not acknowledge all of my. Fe- I'll only acknowledge the good feelings, but not all of them. Yeah. Or I would acknowledge them, but I wouldn't address them. And now I feel like I'm getting better at all of them. Can, wait, I have a question. So, like, yeah. when like when an audience or an audience member, or if you like, uh, they don't have the response that you wanted, how does that do you have a method to like not let that affect your self esteem or affect like the way you see the bit? Yeah, I just try to keep going, but okay, like I I don't know if I really have a method for it, but uh, yeah, I just kind of like oh well, okay. Sometimes I think it's fu- like I'm not saying it's fun or funny to bomb, but like sometimes, especially when I go back and listen, and it's painful to listen to bad sets, but I always like make a point to do it. And then sometimes I'll laugh. It's like, yeah, of course this guy didn't laugh. Of course these group of like four fucking 22-year-old girls didn't laugh at me talking about fucking stealing a pregnancy test. Like, you know what I mean? Like, <laughs> like, I get it. I'm like, yeah, if I was, I wouldn't laugh either, you know? So I, but I like, but I like knowing why, you know? Mm. I like knowing why shit works, but I think I kind of like knowing why shit doesn't work a little more sometimes. That's a very healthy response. Yeah, That's very it's fun. Good. It's just fun. Yeah. And then I'm like, sometimes I listen to it and I'm like, this is so awkward. You know what I mean? I'm like on yeah. the train and I'll listen to it and then I feel like everyone's listening to it. I'm like, well, no one knows what's in my headphones. Yeah. yeah. No one can hear what I'm hearing right now. And then I'm like, I just want to like pale my skin off sometimes. Yeah. Yeah. Goodness. They all just think you're watching a bunch of porn. Yeah. Well, maybe. Because maybe. I remember when you did, uh, uh, you did two virgins uh, comedy, and then like you were talking about the Boston Marathon, and then these three women just walked. Yeah. Out. Yeah. And I get it. You know what I mean? But it's like me dealing with something like that is by making jokes about it. You know yeah. what I mean? Yeah. Because were you actually at that Boston yes. Marathon? Oh, yes, shit. I was, yeah. Oh, my God. Someone said that to yeah, me. Yeah, he was other... involved. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. I put I the backpack down. I thought I saw you somewhere. <laughs> I thought I recognized one of you. The, one of the funniest things about the Boston Marathon that I do feel like doesn't get talked about enough is the New York Post put a picture of just a random dude on the cover the day after. <laughs> and, like, they just rushed to conclusions before anyone said that <laughs> it was this guy. <laughs> And it was just some dude having a good time and then a terrorist attack. <laughs> like, and I'm like, I feel That's like we just nervous. kind of forget about that. Yeah, like the cover of the New York Post the day after or their website or something. It was mm. just this dude. <laughs> he, not, he wasn't a terrorist. You know what I mean? He's just a regular guy standing there. Very close, but, you know. He must get a lot of shit from his friends. <laughs> That's hilarious. Oh that is God. pretty funny. hilarious. That is so it's funny. It's pretty funny. But yeah, like that's a situation where it's like I was there. It was like a very scary, genuinely the most afraid I've ever been in my life. But it's like I like laughing about it. 
Mm. You know, I thought for a second when you when you said a thing that they don't talk a lot about the Boston Marathon that was really funny uh, was the death. <laughs> no one is you... talking about this death. Yeah, no one's talking about it, like how hilarious. Oh, I don't think I'll that's stop. funny. Lucas Arnold does not Ryan O'Toole. No, let yeah, him know. he's making himself cancel proof with that. Ryan, <laughs> Ryan has feelings. I got exactly. yeah, yeah, yeah. lesbo. Not yeah. me. <laughs> but I understand why someone wouldn't find it funny too. For sure. Yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. I yeah. totally get it. It's not, you know, it's not. Um, yeah, I, I actually I went down I went downstairs to like see how they were doing, and I asked I asked one of them I was like, hey, um, are you okay? Like, we're, and she. In, she it was like very loud downstairs and I heard and but all I could make out was uh, I don't want to explain myself to another uh, cis white man. Yeah. It was just like that. And I was just like, OK, I'm going to leave you alone. And then I yeah. just went away. One of It'd those, be funny like, if you were like, I'm black because it's true. But like you can't just like say that to her and have her be like. Yeah. Well, well th- it takes too long to explain. Yeah, you know what? Yeah, yeah. I have to show a picture. Yeah, I'm like, yeah. so you see this. This is my mom. She's half and half. A 23 and, and me report. Exactly. Dude. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I gotta get a printout. But out. some people are just gonna be mad because I remember that. Exactly. Some th- people are just that gonna girl be mad. came out and was screaming at me about something I said about Compton. You know yeah. what I mean? Not that I said about Compton was racist or anything like that. It was just they just hear the word and they immediately judge. Yeah. It's like listen, I and I'm I'm more and more I'm getting a little bit more aware of how I sound and how I <laughs> look. I, but that's who I am. So, but I understand the stereotype and things that come with that. Anyone who knows me knows I'm not. A hateful person, you know. No. But when you do comedy, though, sometimes it's fun to make people think you are a little. Uh, yeah, I don't know what this guy's gonna say in a minute from now. You know yeah. what I mean? Yeah. I love, I love that like line of discomfortness, and then you real, you know, that's the fun of. That's the whole point. You know what yeah. I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's yeah. like literally the whole point, like to uh, f- make funny feelings of uncomfortable stuff. Mm-hmm. I yeah. think. Definitely. I actually wanted to ask about something you said in a set a while back, yeah. and then I don't know where we're. At. Oh, we're, we're a little low. Yeah, we'll get oh, we'll, into listener submissions Then we'll get into soon. listener yeah. submissions. Yeah, yeah. You told a story that I remember about loving Lululemon. Yeah, I'm, I'm wearing their pants. These are Lulu, this is Lululemon are right Lulus? here. Absolutely. What is your experience? At a, do you still go back to the Lululemon? You like to chill in the Lululemon? Do you know people there now? Like... What's your well, relationship what's, what's to story, Lululemon? What story? Are you, what What are we talking about specifically? I this, can't remember what exactly you said about it. What was it, the first I, time you put on a pair of Lululemon? I what liked, was that like? I liked hearing yeah. in your accent you talk about how much you loved Lululemon. I do. <laughs> it, is, it is a great juxtaposition. I love I because classic dude. Like I always thought it was just like hot leggings for girls. I wasn't aware that they had that my sweater over this Lululemon as well. I wasn't aware that they had men's clothes. And then, uh, yeah, I'm just like addicted to their clothes now. Their underwear, uh, everything they have. I'm addicted to. I love it. You know, I love it. Do you have like a rep who who mm. recognizes? No, but the out? store. There is the store on Fifth Avenue. Like they know me. You know what I mean? <laughs> like they do. They do. Cause they're like the so, usual Ryan. The yeah. usual. Well, yeah. you go in there and it's like when you like they just and I love the bags they give you. Like they give you reusable bags that are so fucking good. Like mm. you get a pair of pants. And I'm just like, can you just give me a bunch of bags? I have like 50 bags of like Lululemon at my house, all different because they're so reusable. They're like perfect for like just going. Like when I went to California, just like good to have dirty lawn, like shit like that. And you can beat them up, and like they're just the best. Yeah, I just love. Yeah, I didn't realize. I remember that now. I was at like Greenwich, and I said something about being at Lululemon, and everyone laughs. I was like, what's so funny, dude? It's awesome. Clo- In lifetime warranty on all their shit. Yeah, because you were up on stage like screaming, and then you were like, and you know what else? I love Lululemon. <laughs> <laughs> I do. It's it's a. I love that store. I love the clothes. I love. I love everything about it. Well, I, the, I really do. I was really surprised. I remember when you were first telling me that you were like reading the Harry Potter books, and I was like a huge fan as a kid. I yeah. still am now. That was. A, I loved when we went to the store. And yeah, the yeah, yeah. That Island was great. Too. But I remember you telling me. A while ago, just very casually, you were like, "Oh yeah, my family owns like a Harry Potter merchandise store." We do, yeah. And, <laughs> what? My mother, yeah. yeah, I'll bring and you. And I remember you yeah. telling me yeah. that, and I was like, and then, and then you also told me, "Oh yeah, um, for some reason, I don't know why, from a stand-up bit." You, I got the impression that you like weren't that close with your mom. For some reason, that was the assumption yeah. that I made. But then you were like, "Oh yeah, my mom helps like send out packages of like my resume and headshots Always. to reps." And I was like, "Who the fuck is this yeah. guy?" That's so sweet. Yeah. It was so yeah, my sweet. My mom's the best. Yeah. yeah, she's she helps you out like sending submission wise and shit like that when I ask it. It's yeah. so How did that lovely. Start? Yeah. 
Because it was pretty much, I was just doing so much with, dude, it's so hot. Like right now I'm like almost turned, the the amount of work you have to put in yeah. to be oh, successful yeah. in this life we're doing is insane. I remember it's, I used to make, like, I would make it a day where I would just like drop off my resume and headshots at a lot of different offices. Yeah, but it takes so much time. It does. And my mother, I remember my, I was telling my mother about it and she was like, she I didn't really ask her to do it. She was just willing to do it and I just... Gave her everything. I got jobs out of it. I've got, I, you know, a lot of, I got a couple agents out of it. You know what I mean? So stuff like that, you know, where so she's sweet. awesome with that. That's wonderful. Because there's not enough time for us to do everything, you know? Yeah. We already do so much. Comedian do you have siblings? I, I do. I have a sister who's like a year and a half younger than me. Aww. Where is she? What does she do? She's She just got a new job at a uh, some kind of manufacturing company, some kind of factory in New Hampshire. Hmm. Yeah, she has a sick house in New Hampshire. I went over there. It's like oh. a fucking mansion. I'm sure it's super cheap as well. Yeah, that that was like yeah, and it's huge. She has yeah. like a lake in her back. Yeah, I just oh had an God. image that like she runs the factory, but she also lives in the factory. <laughs> <laughs> She's it's like a sick house. Like there's people there all the time. Yeah. They're rem- always making stuff. <laughs> Do you remember how old you were when you realized that teachers didn't also live in the school? It was yesterday. Yeah, I was gonna say it was yeah. 28. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it was like when I started to feel old. Yeah. What I, time is it? Yeah. I don't remember exactly when, but I do remember like I like seeing a teacher outside of school. Nah, dude, like, oh, that is such yeah. a biggest, mind fuck. That I know, I know. So weird. Or oh, when yeah. you when you accidentally call a teacher mom. Oh, did you guys I did that? that when I was like uh, up in I would say like first grade was did the it, last time I did, did that. It, yeah. uh, I did it in ninth grade. Really? Yeah. Oh this my teacher, god. I, I know. <laughs> I yeah, really well. I was like fifteen. What was the concept? Oh Were you just like, hey, mom, I've got the yeah. answer to your math problem. I know. I I had this teacher, Miss Looney. She was so beautiful. She was like, literally like, I couldn't, I was like, oh my God. And uh, I remember I called her mom one time. She's like, what? I was like, oh, <laughs> sorry. She realized. Now that's how you get close to someone yeah. you want to fuck. Wow. You call a mom. I know. And oh, then yeah. I remember I saw her at I don't know if do you guys know what the 99 is. No. no, it's like a New England area chain restaurant. It's awesome. Okay. And then one another time I saw her outside of school. We were like at tables sitting next to each other, and we didn't say a word to each other the entire time. And we saw each other until Monday when we went to school. She's like, "Yeah, I saw Ryan at the 99." She told the class she saw. Me. <laughs> <laughs> like, why didn't you say? How, she was, was playing it coy. Yeah. 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 I, I remember the first the first time I called like not my mom, mom. It was uh, I had a speech therapist in preschool for what. Uh, I just I I didn't speak until I was four. I was a very late speaker, and I needed I, and just a little speech therapy, and then I was up to speed. You were but saving I, it all for this podcast. I was saving it. <laughs> Won't shut the. I didn't have anything to say. Speaking. Yeah. yeah, but I um, but I had a speech therapist called Pam, and Pam was beautiful. Yeah, she was so. And I remember I, I like I called her mom at least a couple times. I think it's because it's kind of like yeah, it's like a teacher. It's kind of like similar to mom and a respect. Yeah, yeah, pyramid yeah. thing. I did call my girlfriend mom by mistake the other day. Mm. You say by mistake. Yeah. Yeah. No, it's just our routine. Well, she, w- w- I was in a deep sleep, like napping. My mom always used to wake me up from naps. Oh, that's okay. This okay, that's different. Though. And then, and then she, I was like in such a deep sleep, and she's like, "Wake up!" I was like, "Mom, I'll get up later." And she's like, "What the <laughs> fuck, Daddy? <laughs> no, you can't do this. You gotta call me stepmom." <laughs> 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 my name is hot stepmom yeah. come on <laughs> oh, oh god. god but awkward moments are fun too like they're yeah. not fun oh, when yeah. they're happening but i like because i feel awkward thinking back on calling my teacher mom yeah and it's like funny that that happened. it's a good little gem to look back yeah on. even yeah, though yeah. it happened and it like the feeling you get from it i like oh yeah. absolutely yeah, should we get into listener submissions? Let's yes. do it. Speaking yeah. of awkward moments, hell, hell yeah, we're gonna tell some kids. Where are we pulling these people from? Uh, these people, uh, they reached out to us. They on our like through a Google Doc on our Instagram. Mm-hmm. Um, very often these are like younger kids in like high school and middle school, awesome. and they have like very young drama. It's cool. like very oh, yes. Sweet. Okay, someone said last time I submitted a form, it was too long, so I will try and keep this one short. Appreciated. <laughs> Um, I wonder if this is the person who we're also reading for their second submission because there's oh, a really okay. long one. Um, I am giving gifts to my friend who I sort of have a crush on. Let's call her Ada. We're doing Secret Santa and I got her a gemstone necklace. Is this too cheesy or what do you guys think? Sincerely, Bobby. 
I think it's fine. Yeah, I like that. That's a nice little gift. Yeah. Gemstone. Moving on. Yeah. Yeah. That's <laughs> Good it. job. No, yeah. I'll tell you what, Bobby. Listen, I take it it's a young man. Oh, let's say, we'll deal yeah, with yeah. someone <laughs> a little younger than us. Just don't be. I'm not saying. Just don't be shy with women young. Just I'm not saying. You know. Just don't be. Just you. You have a feeling you want to give her a necklace. It's perfectly normal. Just do it and just you know. You don't have to act like you have a. Cr- I know that's so tough, but just give her the necklace. I think. Yeah. Uh, I It'd be crazy not- if he was like in his seventies and you were like, "Listen, <laughs> don't be shy with fifteen-year-old girls. Yeah. It's fine. Yeah. <laughs> Do whatever you Let's want." Let's go, Bobby. Send an update yeah. in and let us know how it goes as well. Oh yeah, please. Yeah. Um, there's these two that are together, but I couldn't get them in the same screenshot. Okay, I so see. I have see. to press the arrow. Okay. Oh, whoopsie daisy. Um. Okay. So um. All right. So. A couple of years ago, uh, there were these two guys in my class that everyone was shipping. Let's call them A and T. Everyone was what? You never heard of the shipping? It's like when you want them to get together. Okay, okay. Yeah. Like Um, fan fiction. Okay. Like a lot of people (laughs) like shipped uh, Harry and Hermione. Okay. A lot of, yeah. If you watch Glee. S-H-I shipping? Yeah, you got it. Yeah. Okay. Um, Yeah. uh, Okay. So now mind you, this is middle school slash junior high school, whatever it's called. I'm not American. So nobody's ever been in a relationship yet. But basically everyone knows about the birds and the bees. Mm -mm. Uh, These guys obviously didn't like being shipped. So one day T asks me to stop the joke. I agree to do so because I respect him. But then about a week later, he tells me that he he tells me that he's bi and he actually liked A for quite some time. I'm mind blown, but just deal with it and keep his secret. And then COVID hit and we started studying from home. And look how the turntables. I discovered that I'm gay and got a crush on A. Later that year, I asked him out and he turned out to be straight. But whatever. I thought he told you he's... uh, Hold on. No, the other one's bi. The other one's bi. The one everyone has a crush on is straight. Okay. Which sucks for them. T is into A, but this writer is also into A. Asked A out. A said no. Okay. Yeah. Okay. But A's um, straight. A straight. Yeah, straight. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I'm gay and got a crush on A later that I asked him and turned out to be straight. But whatever, it's not that important. To this day, I'm still blown away with how everything turned out to be. Um, and then this is part two. Epilogue. Epilogue. So there's this new guy in my class this year, and when I saw him at the start of the school year, I instantly got a crush on him. At first, he seemed very straight. He's basically a stereotypical soccer player. But over the course of two and a half months, carefully analyzing his behavior, <laughs> I realized that all the little signs are there he doesn't pull his leg away immediately if i get close to it slash touch it with mine our eyes kind of lock when he catches me staring at him and sometimes he even copies my body language a little bit so now it feels like he's maybe gay bi or pan etc and has a thing for me but he's hiding it well now for context i live in a very well known large previously communist slavic country what (laughs) this is a plot twist Okay. Okay, whoa. So being gay is basically illegal. You poor Aww. you poor thing. I'm so sorry. I'm sorry. He also always tries to get me to play soccer. I'm not into any kind of sports at all. Do I, it. Worse than the gay yeah. bashing. <laughs> <laughs> being asked to play soccer, worse yeah. than the gay bashing. Okay, I think uh, I think I'm being pretty obvious. I think I'm being pretty obvious with me having a crush on him and I recently told him I'm gay. First off, you're brave for doing that, especially in this country. I'm amazed at that courage. Good, good, good. I definitely would not have that. Would not have had that courage. Um, I recently told him I'm gay. It just slipped out of my mouth. So there's three versions of what might be happening. He's either messing with me, actually has a thing for me, or just doesn't get it at all, and that's just his normal behavior. What do you guys think about it? I'm just completely lost and in desperate need of advice on what to do next. Go get him. Yeah, yeah. I think I say. Well, first off. Consider your own safety yes. first and foremost. Yeah, sure, sure, yeah. But definitely. that being said, if you already confessed your sexuality to him, maybe ask him about his sexuality. Yeah, he's clearly listen. He's if, clearly open and yes, and is close to you. Exactly. That last option he said, where the guy has no idea what's going on. Absolutely not. Mm-hmm. There's no, no way. No. Yeah, he knows the leg touch is interesting. Absolutely, the le- that is a very like when you just like when you like touch someone's yes. leg and they don't move it. That's a very clear sign. I mean, sign. Lucas is doing it to me right yeah. now. <laughs> I was. And this I just wrap a... my leg around him. This is what they call the long game. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he, he's like, hey, want to start a po- podcast? So uh, just a, yeah. Go out. Where we sit podcast. next to each other on the same couch. Just like, yeah. 
Yeah, that's what but, we started um, doing in person for. I would say, yeah, I would say I, I, I think he's into it. I think, I he, think so, too. Yeah. yeah. I would say he's probably shy or you got to go for this one. You got you need to just uh, be the not the aggressor. That's not the right word, but you need to take charge. So I to would say. say in a positive sense, yes. be confrontational. Yeah, totally. Be the, con- be the confronter. Without a doubt. But uh, yeah, definitely how are you, go how were you uh, growing up and being like actually describing your feelings to someone you were into? Were you confident with doing that growing up? No, hell no. Oh, I was I was petrified. Yeah, it was awful. What did you like? Do you remember like a first crush or something? Uh, yeah, I remember having crushes on girls in like elementary school and never telling them. Oh, yeah, I wish I could have. Some, yeah, some some babes out there. You know? <laughs> Feel weird saying they're that. still in Legend. elementary. Yeah. I was about to say, <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I was pretty bad. I was pretty bad at it. Are you yeah. better at it now? Yeah, like now, now I'm like too much. You know what I mean? <laughs> now I'm like telling everybody every feeling. You know? Oh uh, man! But That's I don't care. Though. You know? Good. Did you wait? Were you courageous and and uh, very no. uncourageous? Yeah. Unbelievably uncourageous. Men, oh, yeah. women. I wouldn't tell anyone anything. I had an assumption that nobody could have possibly been interested oh same. and Absolutely. when people were interested i thought that they were pranking me because someone did that to me once they did that stupid thing that guys do in middle <sighs> school where they like fake ask you out i'm gonna i'm gonna say i did that you fake ask someone I out i did actually what, did I was you, what do you evil. mean fake ask somebody okay out? okay no i didn't okay i, I didn't wasn't intentionally doing Lucas. that <laughs> but i remember there was this girl who i like i didn't even i genuinely wasn't trying to like suggest anything but i was like hey come over here and then i would like shake this tree it would like just rain and i would like get water to like it was like a prank to do on (laughs) each other but she then i like heard through the grapevine that she thought that i was about to ask her out and i was like oh shit no so you did it by mistake no it was by mistake but i I did it to me on purpose but i but i recognize now that that was like coded in like what i did even though it wasn't intentional i had a guy come up to me and he was like oh gabby i've God, I, you know, I, I really like you. I think you're real cute. Like, do you want to go out with me? And I was like, wow, geez, Chris, this is so unexpected. And then he started laughing. He was like, psych. I was like, what Fuck a fucking you. asshole. Oh, that's I mean. know. That's I was so mean. so mean. I couldn't believe it. So ever since then, I thought that anytime someone had an attraction to me, it was like Damn. a prank. But, but so that mean. kid became Chris Hemsworth. So <laughs> how do we all feel now? Now I'm like, you know what? I wish it was. I'll, I'll ask him out. I yeah. wish it was real. One no. time, one time, I I remember I was in I was in sixth grade for the first time, and uh, I saw a girl on her calculator. She wrote on the back of her calculator my name. It said Ryan O'Toole in a hot, <laughs> and it, and she was like the hottest girl in oh school. My God. I had a huge crush on her, and I just didn't do anything. Oh man, she I wrote don't know your why. name with the heart. I know, and it was in like go. I don't. It was sitting like pretty. I was like where she was like where that table. I could see it. And I knew she had a fucking cry, and I just never did anything. Oh my god! I'll tell I'll tell you one that uh, when I was in my sophomore year of high school, there was this girl I had two classes with. Her name was Sam, and she was beautiful. She was in my year, and as we were waiting to go to social studies, um, it was on a Monday, and she was like, "How was your weekend?" And I was like, "Oh, it was all right. Um, kind of boring. Didn't really do that much." And then she just looked me dead in the face, and she was like, "And I was like, whoa!" And then I was like. Okay, and then she gave me her number, and I was like, because that that had never happened yeah, before. Yeah. I was like, I had a rush from it, and totally. then like I texted her, I got no response, and then I like I waited like a couple days. I wasn't trying to be too eager. I texted again, just being like, hey, everything okay? I got no response. And then the next week, I was like, hey, um, I was trying to be cool about. It. I was like, hey, I tried texting you, and I didn't get a response. And then she looked, and she was like, oh, I accidentally put in the wrong digit. For, for her number oh, she actually Jesus and so Christ. i was like oh okay so this is still gonna work so out gullible. <laughs> i was yeah yeah i put in the oh yeah yeah you put in the wrong digit for three yeah. days <laughs> you guys went to school together yeah so what happened the next day she had a boyfriend Ugh. damn that's brutal i was livid having I a was... crush on somebody when you're so young is so insane like so I embarrassing it, it is because it's it like, occupies so much of your energy yeah, that, well. yeah that's the thing like you can like literally hear your heart beat. it's like when edgar Allan poe's talking about how he can't hear anything else except his heart beating it's like the same in th- like i think the crazy thing is you think everything's the biggest deal in the history of Huge. the universe yeah. you know oh for sure Ugh. I was gonna say something about crushes. Now I'm forgetting. Um, doesn't matter. I'll think of it. 
All right, should we get into our final segment? Yes, let's do it. Yeah, All right, so we do. Uh, uh, I don't know if you're. Good luck to that guy, by the way. I hope it good works. Good luck. Out. Yeah, yeah. Seriously. Good luck Take to you, move. listener. Uh, Take just, the yeah. reins. Absolutely. You can Absolutely. do it. Don't be you like us. This. Yes. We're <laughs> all. We are all shipping you two. Yes. We really are. Yeah. Um. Okay. So we have this thing called Self Perception Corner, where we ask our guests to describe how they believe they are perceived by other people, and then we say how we actually perceive you. Beautiful. Okay. So I gotta say what? How I'm perceived? How you? Yeah. <laughs> he is like I just like, yeah. Yeah, we just think it. that you're beautiful. You know? How um? But yeah, how how you how do you believe you are perceived by other people? Um, a little. I, I think I'm getting better at. Okay. Uh, how do I think? P- pretty good, honestly. I think I'm perceived pretty good. I think when people don't know me, I I felt that I've noticed a lot of times. Sometimes people think I might be like a little crazy. In the sense, like, a little uh, not too in control of myself. But I think when people actually get to know me, it's, like, the opposite, you know? Mm. I think if I were to guess, if we were in a room, all three of us together, and I don't think a lot of people in our com- in the comedy community would think we would have a conversation. Like, if I had a guess, by the way, you, I speak, you guys speak, each a piece. I don't think people would assume we would just be friends. Mm. I feel you on that, for sure. Um, I remember crystal clear my first impression of you actually it was a tiny covered rooftop and you were in like a little like hoodie and you went up and it was like freezing cold and you like were dead silent on stage for like five seconds and then you just went, I feel bad for Martin Luther King <laughs> <laughs> yeah. and everyone fucking lost their shit and I was like wait a minute who is this person yeah. <laughs> and then i you just intrigued me i was like i need to know more about you and then it was like everything that like my first impression was like you just do the opposite of it like you know tough guy from boston it turns out you're a softy yeah, yeah you're yeah, totally. like you know into you like your lululemon clothes yeah. you like feelings <laughs> yeah, you like yeah, shakespeare yeah. like yeah. you're like a fucking renaissance man and i think you're one of the least like socially idiotic comedians i've ever met like you'll actually ask people about their you'll be like where are you from like comics just talking bits you know i like, love people dude yeah I, lo- yeah I love different like i said my fa- i love different kinds of people yeah you're like an you know? extrovert and i oh, think yeah. but i think you can draw out like shy people i think like there's a lot of people who need just like people yelling around them all the time or talking around them all the time but like you're able to like draw out all personalities i respect that thank oh, you yeah. yeah i will admit that when i first met you i i was i thought oh i'm probably not gonna have a lot in common <laughs> yeah, with this yeah. person i definitely made that assumption yeah. and just over time i'm like oh this is the biggest sweetheart in the world who never wants to make anyone feel bad about themselves just one of the funnest spirits uh, I, yeah it means i a lot. just yeah, I'm always pleased to see you. You same and here. I'm a big fan of both of you guys. Ah, you know, you. like thank I said, I, I feel like I, I understand what you like. I think a lot of that comes from like stereotypes on television about people from Boston and definitely shit like that. Yeah. for sure. And the thing is, I, I, I am very friendly with a lot. of. I don't blame people for not wanting to know different people necessarily, you know. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, I, I appreciate that. I yeah. actually you just reminded me of what I was going to say about crushes earlier. Well, let's mm, get back to it. it. Lucas, when that girl was like call me yeah it occurred to me that back in like the early 2000s people in movies would just all the time be like call me yeah Yeah. and i feel like as a girl that was the thing like i'm sure i did that to a guy or two because that was the thing that like made you feel like a woman if you like went up to a guy you were like hey call me yeah you know did you did Did you you make you feel good when you did that or oh it was hot yeah i was gonna say did did you (laughs) yeah did you practice (laughs) a hot girl call me yeah yeah, yeah. of course in the mirror just like yeah okay Okay, no no wrong finger okay okay come on (laughs) and then i was like doing the improv thing like a phone is held like this it's not like this yeah you know maybe you can't see if you're just listening but on the video did you ever intend to follow through with it though of course not what do you think i am you should bring that back (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> <laughs> no one calls anyone nowadays no. you know what i mean i like phone calls i love I do too dude a huge fan i think yeah. we've huge. lost the art of the fucking yes. phone call huge yeah, yeah, yeah. fan yeah i can't do the spontaneous call but i like planned phone calls. yeah i mean oh too. you know yeah i'm a big or, or or like just being like i'm gonna call you later today yeah, just like a call yeah. that you know about you're gonna have later in the day that's a good amount of like pl- spontaneous but also planned that yeah. works for me. I'm very pro phone call as well. We Absolutely. were talking about it with FaceTime. I like yeah, FaceTime yeah. as well. 
you know. Ryan's yeah. always FaceTiming the boys. I am, mm. dude. I love. I I see. I now I know. I don't like being uh, spontaneously FaceTime to call, but I do that to people all the time. <laughs> yeah, you know what? And I know they're not. I, I don't do it to everybody, but I do it to my friends where I know like why you call me. I like it. Yeah, yeah. you know, I like bothering people in a harmless <laughs> in a very harmless way. You know. Oh, God. Bothering people in a harmless way. Yeah. That's beautiful. I think that is a perfect place to end. Yes. Yeah. Ryan. Thank you so much. Ryan, would you please plug and promote anything you like? Yeah. Uh, Instagram at It's Ryan O'Toole. That's I-T-S Ryan O'Toole. O-T-O-O-L-E. Uh, I got a podcast, The Ryan O'Toole Show. I sell stuff on Amazon Live every Friday. Uh that's at it's on my Instagram. All my stuff's on my man. yeah. All my stuff's on Instagram at it's Ryan O'Toole, and I think that's yeah. I think that's all. That's I, good. Yeah, Bezos can't compete with you. That's Tell right. You that's that right. much. I love right. you guys. You guys. We are love the best. you too so much. Thank you so much for coming on. Uh, thank you for watching and listening. We'll see you guys next time. Peace.